So our last three verses for today are going to be 1 John 2, 4 through 6. Uh, let me first show you an expression that John is going to use many times from now on. I think it's probably starting here, though he hasn't used them yet. Uh, sometimes he says it this way. Uh, where's the second one? Ooh, there was another one here. So this is a participle with a definite article. The one who says, the saying person. The one who says. Previously in John, we've had if someone says, eon, tis, and then a subjunctive. This kind of has the same effect. The one who says that, I know him, etc. There's yet a third way to do it. So you can do it with eon, tis, subjunctive. You can do it with article and uh, participle, substantival participle. Or you can do it this way. So hos, on, would be whoever. And then you need a subjunctive because of the on, whoever. So this is the word keep. So whoever keeps, he could just as well have said the one who keeps, ha teron, or he could have said if on tis te ro, if some or te re, if someone keeps. So it's it's different ways of saying basically the same thing. It's it's attributing a viewpoint to somebody. So let's read the first one. If, no, the one who says that. Now the only way to translate this is. I know him. So the problem is this, with the word that. If we can make it go away, it makes more sense. The one who says, quote, I know him. And that's probably, in fact, the correct translation. We should think of this as the quotation. So that raises the question, why is this word here? Well, the word haughty can mean that or because, but it can also introduce a direct quotation. And what some editors do is when they discern that it must be the beginning of a direct quotation rather than indirect, they will then capitalize the next letter. And uh, so this letter will actually show up as a capital letter in some versions of the New Testament and as a small letter in others, depending on what editors decide to do with it. But I think we have to translate this as a direct quote. Because otherwise, if I say, the one who says that I know him, then they must be talking about me rather than about themselves. So the one who says, I know him, and, and at the same time, doesn't keep. That's that word tereo. Uh, so, um, so again, this is a participle. Agreeing, it's 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 this person. So, the saying person and the not keeping. Person. So this has this is a participle. You can see the ending, and the may shows that it's not an indicative. So we may end up translating it, and he doesn't keep. But the literal Greek is the not keeping one, the saying one, and not keeping. So if you're the sort of person who says this but doesn't keep his commandments, and then we're going to find out what the consequences are in a minute. So let me go through this line one more time. The person who says, quote, I know him, and not keeping, and at the same time not keeping, so he's the same person, the saying one and the not keeping one, and not keeping his commandments, that person is a psustase. We saw that before already in chapter one. He's a liar. We would say he's inconsistent. John would say, no, he's not inconsistent. What he believes and what he lives are exactly consistent. He's just lying about what he believes. He doesn't actually know him. Uh, so you're either deceived or you're lying because it's not true. So if you claim to know him, this is again the perfect, I have come to know him and therefore do, now do. And now again, he's going to say exactly the same thing he said before. And the truth is not in him. He said that last time already. So is a liar and in this one, this person, the truth not is. But, now this is the alternative, whoever keeps. So that's the other way to do it. He could have said the one keeping, but he chooses this time to use the subjunctive. Whoever keeps his word in this one truly, that's the adverb that goes with aletheia, truly in this one 
the love of God is the verb. Has been perfected. Has reached its goal. You can see this is teleao, to perfect. Passive, the lengthened connecting vowel, the passive ending directly onto the stem. We duplicate it, so this is the perfect passive. Has been fulfilled, has been completed, has reached its goal, and therefore he is now at the goal, so the present implications. So truly in this one, the love of God has been perfected. In this one, no, in this way, this is a neuter. In this way, in this, we know that we are in him. So we know that we're abiding in Christ. This is an expression that's common in John. It's going to show up a few times in John. The word meno, here the word meno doesn't appear, abide in him, but it's we are in him. We know that we're in him when God's love is perfected in us, and that's what's going to happen if we truly, truly uh, keep his word. That would, be, that would involve acknowledging what God says about us, confessing our sins, living according to his commandments. Okay, and one more verse to go. The one saying, now in English, we never uh, add an infinitive after say. We do after the word to claim, which is really what this is. You're claiming something to be true. So in English, we could say, he claims to remain in him. As soon as we change it to says, we don't say he says to remain in him. Then we change it to a clause. He says that he remains in him. So in English, these, this indirect speech is introduced with a that and then a whole clause if the word is say. But you can use an infinitive if you use the word claim. So what I often encourage Greek students to do is just pretend that this word means claim until you've translated the Greek into a bad grammar in English, and then switch it back to the word says and figure out how to say that in proper English. So this is how it come out then. The one claiming to remain in him. I'll change it to says. The one saying that he remains in him. Okay. So the infinitive goes away, we turn it into an uh, indirect speech, but it's really the same thing. In Greek, you can keep this indirect speech with an infinitive after the word say. I think one of the very last comments in our chapter on infinitives mentioned this meth, this, this use of the infinitive for indirect speech. So, the one who is claiming to remain in him, or the one who says that he remains in him, ought, offalay means he ought to do something. This is one of those words that requires an infinitive. It's this infinitive for um, a complementary infinitive. He begins to do it, he wants to do it, he is about to do it, he's able to do it. A lot of these words require an infinitive. This one, he ought to do it. So here's the infinitive, to walk. The one claiming to remain in him ought to walk just as that one walked. Well, let's leave this out for now. If you claim to remain in him, you need to walk the way he did, uh, because there's going to be a correspondence in life between the way he lived and the way we live. In Greek, we use hutos as the near demonstrative, this one, and ekenos as the far demonstrative, that one. In English, we only do it for, for proximity in terms of location, so I could say this brush or that window. In Greek, you can do it with texts as well. So this one is the one I talked about most recently, and that one is the one I talked about farther back in the text. So when you have that one, that means that he must have talked about someone in the meantime. Uh, so he talked about God in the meantime. The love of God has been perfected. That's how we know that we are in him, that is in God. The one claiming to remain in him, that is God, ought to walk as that one, the one I was talking about before that. So this is now Jesus. So we can keep track of whether it's this one would be God and that one would be Jesus. 
because one of them is closer in the text and the other one's farther away. So, the one claiming to remain in him ought to walk just as that one walked. Now, this is a little bit redundant. So, he ought, he also ought to walk thus, just as that one. So, these words could have actually been eliminated. It would have said the same thing. It's kind of extra words that emphasize the point. Let me go through it one more time. The one claiming to remain in him, he ought, so this is the subject of, of this, he ought also, also he or and he, ought just as that one walked, thus to walk. Uh, so it's, it's adding words that just really say exactly the same thing. Point of verse 6, if we claim to remain in God, we need to walk like Jesus. So a very strong call so far in this text to obedient, uh, obeying commands, uh, walking the way Jesus did, living a life consistent with what we're claiming, and that is that we're abiding in God. So the result of all that God has done is that we don't sin, except we do. And so we never claim we don't. When we do, we gain forgiveness, and then we continue on the journey of being people who don't sin until we do and need forgiveness. So John is very clear that we'll never achieve the goal, but he's also very clear that that's always the goal. Uh, so we've really had kind of two big emphases so far. By the time we get most of the way through chapter two, we'll get all the main emphases of the book on the table, and then he kind of keeps coming back to them. So the first emphasis was Jesus was a real human person that we encountered and that we now are passing that on to the next generation. And we need to respond to the whole sin question the way God does, by acknowledging that we're sinners, by receiving the forgiveness that Jesus makes possible through his helasmos role as an advocate, and uh, so that we get back on track and don't live a life of sinfulness. So that's as far as we've got. Uh, that's... Uh, 16 verses. That's a pretty big chunk, especially because they're the, some of the hardest verses in the whole book. Uh, we've got quite a few weeks left to do the rest, and it will get easier, I can assure you. So as you use these uh, videos, you can review them, you can stop, you can go back, you can do whatever you need to in order to get a good handle on these 16 verses. And then you have another two weeks at least before we're going to be meeting in class, hopefully in class, uh, so work through the rest of chapter 2 ahead of what we do in class so that you can benefit the most from what we do when we do it together in class as well. All right, take care. Keep washing your hands. Keep praying for God's protection for our world.